Hey everybody, Yankee here. Today I want to take a few minutes and talk about hydrostatic shock. And the reason I want to talk about it is because someone in my live chat the other night asked me, Hey Yankee, what do you think of hydrostatic shock? Is it a real thing or is it a bunch of baloney? Well, first, before we talk about it and whether I believe in it completely, let's talk about what it is for those people who might not know. Hydrostatic shock is a theory that when a bullet hits your body, it creates a pulse of energy that basically radiates through your body and can cause severe damage. You know, damage beyond where the bullet hit. It actually overpressurizes basically your body and you suffer brain bleeds, broken bones, uh, tissue tears and organ damage, just all kinds of things from the shock wave itself, that pressurization wave. Well, that is a real thing. That can happen. If someone is standing close to an explosion and isn't even hit with any solid material, often they can receive damage. They can have fractured bones. They can have organ damage. They can have brain damage just from the energy hitting their body, traveling through it and causing problems. So it is a real thing, but is it real when it comes to a bullet hitting your body? Does that bullet actually create enough energy that it overpressurizes your system, causes brain bleeds, can damage bones, etc.? Well, originally, they thought that this was 100% true, that a bullet can hit you in the abdomen, can cause a rib to crack because of that pulse wave. Turns out later they've decided that that's more because of temporary wound cavities than it is the actual theory of hydrostatic shock which I know sounds like splitting hairs, but there is a difference. A temporary wound cavity is where actual tissue is moved by that force wave or that energy where the bullet hits you. And those organs or tissues moving against each other can cause damage. And they found out that that's how bones were being damaged. And it wasn't actually any type of pulse wave. It was actual physical bashing together parts which like I said, I know sounds like you're splitting hairs here, but you have to pay attention to the small differences here. There's a difference between temporary wound cavity and hydrostatic shock. Now, of course, with a wound cavity, I believe 100% that temporary wound cavities are very important. And the bigger temporary wound cavity a bullet leaves is the more likely you're gonna cause damage to that person. Uh, you know, if your spleen gets slammed up against your ribs, or your diaphragm gets slammed into your lungs, that's going to cause uh, issues for you. It's going to cause you maybe to go into shock, maybe cause you even to bleed out faster because you're, you know, more damage inside and can cause all kinds of bad things. So I think temporary wound cavity is very important. Now, do I believe that an energy wave, a pressure wave travels through the body and can cause problems everywhere? I don't really think I buy that. Uh, and here's the reason, because when you're looking at a pulse wave traveling through your body, we do similar things in medical treatments. If you're someone who suffers from kidney stones, like I do really bad, you have treatments where they will use uh, a machine that sends a pulse wave of energy through your body, uh, vibrations, and actually breaks up the stones so you can pass them easier. And that is something they do quite often. And here's the thing. The soft tissues of your body, even the bones that are in the way of that uh, device, don't get damaged. It just breaks up the stone. It doesn't have the same effect on our tissues because they're fairly resilient to things like vibration. So if that is the case, if your body is that resilient to those vibrations, why wouldn't they be resilient to other vibrations? Now, I know a lot of people will be like, oh, it's the pressure, though. You're overpressurizing the system inside your body. That can even cause your veins to pop, you know, your uh, blood vessels in your brain to pop. But I don't think I buy that either. Uh, I don't think that a bullet hitting you here actually overpressurizes your cardiovascular system that much. The studies I've seen on it just don't seem conclusive. Now, there's evidence there. They did studies with pigs and even dogs. I wish I hadn't read that part. That pissed me off. That, you know, when shot in the thigh, that causes, oh, they're having brain hemorrhages and stuff. And they're basing that on EKG readings from these animals as they shoot them. And uh, I would say that, you know, you might have changes in your brain on EKG just from being shot. So I don't know if I found their study conclusive or not. In fact, I found a bunch of holes in it my own self, you know, as far as my opinion goes. So I, I'm not totally convinced that that's a thing, that hydrostatic shock is a thing. Now they did autopsies on some human bodies that had been shot, like in the abdomen and stuff, and they're like, oh, there's bleeds in their brains. Well, yeah, but that can be caused by lots of other things too. I mean, they could have fell down after they got shot. They could already have issues with, you know, 
their vascular system. So I don't know if those were conclusive either. It seems like it's a bunch of anecdotal evidence uh, with a theory to try and explain it. But too often that theory doesn't work. We see people get shot in places all the time. They don't immediately fall down or explode. Uh, there's some people that think when you shoot a bullet into something that it just explodes. They'll show pictures of like coyotes getting shot through the neck and it looks like things are expanded. And I'm like, well, that's really just the shockwave of the bullet. It's not really showing that it's causing any uh, physical damage to the body. The, your body can actually allow energy waves to pass through it. So when you see those that look like, oh my God, it looks like his head exploding. If you look close, no, it's not. It's mostly just their fur puffing out and dirt flying around, you know, things like that. So I don't 100% buy the whole notion of hydrostatic shock, except for the fact that I do believe the wound cavity is very important, that a bigger wound cavity, even a temporary one, causes more damage. So I'm very uh, interested in knowing how big a wound cavity a bullet causes, but as far as, oh, is it gonna travel shock waves to the brain and take them out or put them in shock, or you know, is it gonna overpressurize the system and it's gonna shut down? I've never seen any evidence that fully supports that. I've seen evidence that suggests it, but I've seen evidence that says otherwise too. And it seems like it's a big debate in the medical field. And if these people that know far more about it can't decide, well then, I'm sure I can't make up uh, the definitive answer to whether it's true or not. And it seems like after doing the research, most of the theories that are truly out there that say, you know, oh yeah, when you get shot in the abdomen, it causes a shock wave that can overpressurize your system and just take you out completely. Uh, that was created by gun people, not by medical people. In fact, uh, medical people didn't use the word shock. That was a gun tuber, not gun tubers, but gun writers back in the day, etc. that used that term. They created that term, the whole notion that that pulse wave puts you in the shock uh, and you uh, go out, you know, you're incapacitated. That was actually a creation of the gun industry and the writers in the industry. So like I said, as far as hydrostatic shock is concerned, to make a long video even longer here by summing it up, uh, I don't buy it 100%. I just don't think bullets make that much energy that they can actually cause that kind of thing to happen. Whether it's rifle bullet or handgun bullet, they just don't create enough energy. Like I said, those little tools that break up kidney stones create like five times more energy than the bullet does. And it doesn't damage the soft tissues. So I think our tissues are more resilient than that. But like I said, that energy is still energy. And if it slams your spleen into your kidneys or your kidneys into your ribs, you know, uh, that can cause you some damage, really take the fight out of you. So I think temporary wound cavities are something to think about. But as far as hydrostatic shock, I don't think there's any definitive word on it either way. And I myself just don't really buy into it all that much. Hey everybody, just a quick reminder before we go, if you want to be registered to win the free solid silver live round we're giving away from Minuteman Ammo, either in Vampire Defense, Werewolf Defense, or Cowboy Defense, go on over and sign up on Patreon today. It's the last day that you can be registered in the drawing. We will actually be drawing two other people this time also. We'll be choosing three winners. The first winner will get the bullet. The next two winners will get a can of ammo from Minuteman Ammunition. I recommend the Cream of whoop ass which is 357 magnum and therefore my favorite but you might prefer a flavor like cowboy chili con queso which is 45 colt so if you want to be registered in this drawing go on over right now become a patron of the channel at a five dollar level or more you'll get one entry for every five dollars and help support programs like pets and vets the friend program and the voices program so go on over sign up support the channel and possibly win yourself a nice little prize